first of all, really, congratulations on taming inflation. I remember the last time that we spoke a couple of years ago on the show, you were really aggressively hiking rates. Now you're leading the global push towards easing policy. Uh, given how you've been at the forefront of global monetary policy, what pace of rate cuts do you envision for the central bank in Brazil for next year? Well, first, is, uh, it's, it's important to, um, to start saying that we've had uh, a good year. Uh, we, like you said, we started hiking earlier. We had a view that uh, the, the inflation was not as temporary as, as it was advertised in the beginning for many different reasons. So we did a, an extensive uh, uh, cycle of, uh, of hikes. Um, I think it worked. And at the same time, we can say that we had somewhat of a soft landing because we were able to tame inflation with very little or almost no uh, change in, in the uh, outcast, uh, in, the, in the estimates for growth. Also, credit felt, but very little. And when you look at employment, uh, it's doing relatively well. So we've seen uh, revisions in growth on the upside, even with uh, higher rates. And now we are initiating a process, we have initiated a process of lowering rates. It's difficult to tell you where this is going to, um, to end. I think it depends on, on, on the different, uh, many different factors, but I think Brazil is doing well and we are confident that we were able to um, stabilize inflation. As you mentioned, today we are, going, uh, uh, we are going back to the band for the year. And when you look at expected inflation, even though it's still a little bit above the target, uh, it's very well behaved. Tell us about the divergence with longer term inflation expectations. Is that going to be a problem and how will you manage that? Well, the, the, the long-term inflation, uh, expected inflation, you have the, the forecast from the economists and also you have the implied inflation from the market. Both are trending uh, lower, still a little bit above the target, but we think that res uh, rates are so restrictive in Brazil that we can start to, uh, to, uh, to, you know, we can continue with the process of lowering rates because as inflation goes lower, the real rates go higher. So you have space to lower rate and still be on the restrictive camp. You're saying that you have uh, can see visibility for the next two policy meetings or so. Um, the question then now is what happens after. Are we correct in understanding that what comes after those two policy meetings that you have visibility for, we should be expecting perhaps smaller rate cuts? Well, we can't say for sure. The only thing we, we are saying right now is that we think 50, 50 bips is an appropriate uh, pace. Uh, to follow, and then we see that for the next meetings. Meetings in plural means basically the next two meetings. Uh, after that, you know, it's going to depend on a lot of things. I think a lot of uncertainties will clear out between here and there. We have uh, an international scenario that uh, uh, warns a lot of concern. You have uh, geopolitical problems. You have uh, an uncertainty regarding the price of oil. Um, but, you know, when we look at what we've seen, and how the emerging markets have reacted and how Brazil has reacted, um, it, it puts us on a, on a positive mood. The Brazilian real has become even more resilient, especially given that you were cautious about the international backdrop earlier this month. And since then, even U.S. yields have come down. So does a more benign external conditions change your outlook? Well, I think when you look at the, at, at the real against the dollar, you have to look at both sides. So first, Brazil has improved in terms of uh, gaining credibility with the, the early uh, cycle and tame inflation. Uh, also, the inflow to Brazil has been very strong. The agriculture has been strong. We also have an increase in expected flow coming from an increase in oil production. So when you look at the external accounts, Brazil is doing reasonably well. And at the same time, when you look at the other side, there's a perception that advanced economies have a much higher debt and, and as, a, as a result, have a much higher risk, and you can see that in the CDS markets. So I think when you look at the difference between Brazil and some of the advanced economies, Brazil is faring uh, well, and that's why the currency is well behaved. So what's the risk from other policymakers, such as the Fed, if we do in fact stay higher for longer, which seems not to be the narrative, at least right now, if that happens, how low are you comfortable going? I think the effect may, mainly comes from a liquidity squeeze that could happen. Because when you look at the size of the debt in the US and how much 
uh, it was spent during the pandemic, what you have is you have an initial position in terms of the debt that's much higher, but it costs much more to roll over the debt because interest rates is always higher. So when you look at the profile of the amount of interest rates that U.S. spends on paying the debt, that's been increasing a lot. And that, you know, it's like uh, drying up liquidity everywhere. You can see some of that already in the corporate space. And, and, and when you look at uh, the longer horizon, eventually this might mean lower liquidity for emerging market countries. Brazil's economy has been pretty resilient, but at the same time, economic activity has been slowing down. How concerned are you about the risk of an overreaction coming from the fiscal side of things? Well, I think when you look at fiscal in Brazil, and, and I think the first thing is to recognize that uh, uh, the fiscal is being loose for, you know, for a long time almost everywhere. Uh, when we think about the, you know, the, what, what was done collectively, both fiscal and on the monetary front, globally, we had a very good coordination going into the crisis, to the COVID crisis. So all the central banks were able to lower rates. Uh, there were many fiscal programs in place. So it was very coordinated on the way in. I don't think I can say the same on the way out. So we have monetary policy that is somewhat coordinated globally, but fiscal policy is not. So we still have places that are running, you know, fiscal accounts that are not, you know, as restrictive as they could be. Uh, and I think that is important to recognize. In the case of Brazil, Brazil did a fiscal framework. Uh, we had a fiscal framework before. Uh, they had some problems in the conception. As time passes by, it was uh, there was a fix that was needed. So the government came up uh, with a fiscal framework. What we have been stressing in the central bank is the fiscal framework uh, presents uh, an ability for Brazil uh, to sustain uh, the level of debt uh, more or less uh, where it is today. There is uh, some measures that the government needs to pass in Congress to increase uh, tax collections, and that actually uh, is happening uh, uh, as we speak. And we need to observe to see, you know, how much of, of, of a conversion we will be able to present. But when I look at uh, Brazil in comparison to other countries, or I think Brazil is, is doing pre, uh, pretty well in that respect. We have seen policymakers really focus on the revenue side of things, as you said, trying to change laws in order to increase uh, the revenue intake. But at the same time, new interpretations have popped up here and there about those fiscal rules that have been approved earlier this year. How concerned are you that if we adopt a more flexible approach to this fiscal framework, that could make the job of the central bank more difficult? Well, I think first it's important to mention that it's not a mechanical relationship. So uh, if the market has a perception that the fiscal uh, is getting out of order or it's, it's uh, be beginning to be uh, loose again in a way that impacts the variables that are relevant in our framework, then the central bank has to react. But it's not a mechanical relationship itself on the fiscal. Uh, usually what you see in Brazil is that we have this twin, the anchorage, which is when people don't believe on the targets in terms of the fiscal, it has an impact in inflation in the long term. But what we have seen right now is that the government is, is uh, uh, showing that it has uh, the, the willingness to pursue the target. And we have been stressing that pursuing the target uh, and trying to do as best as you can uh, to equilibrate the trajectory of the debt is what's relevant. And of course, when it comes to the trajectory of the debt and investor concerns as well, uh, where more to look than Argentina, your neighbor? Um, we have seen that election of Javier Millet as well. I know that you've been watching their economy closely as well as an example of very high inflation. Are there any lessons or an impact coming from Argentina for Brazil? How are you monitoring what's happening in Argentina? Well, Argentina is a clear example in which the autonomy of the central bank lost steam. And then for some time, you were not able to meet the fiscal targets. There are a lot of changes in the monetary targets and on the fiscal targets to an extent that you lost credibility. And the loss in credibility generates a spiral uh, that uh, actually uh, at the end uh, caused a much higher inflation. Uh, we can only hope now that we have a new government that Argentina is uh, able to, you know, turn around. It's very important for Brazil 
to have Argentina uh, working towards uh, an equilibrium because it's a very important trading partner for Brazil. So we are hoping for the best in Argentina. Governor, in our conversations, you've always emphasized the technical nature of your job as head of the central bank in Brazil. You're just one out of nine votes in the board. How much do you think the president appreciates this now? Well, I have talked to the to the president about you know the nature of the central bank. I think now not only the president but the whole government understands how technical the job has been. Uh, sometimes it's hard because the message that you have to give is a message that you need to keep interest rates higher because at the end our mandate is to have price stability and price stability is very important in terms of long-term planning for investors and in terms of consumption. Uh, price stability is very much correlated to consumer confidence in Brazil. So if you don't have price stability, you start to have a lot of problems, which in a turn, uh, in turn, what they cause is lower growth ahead.